Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today I want to teach you guys how to catch fish on these hot dog days of summer. When that temperature starts going up and the bite starts getting tougher, a lot of fishermen give up. You don't need to do that. You can catch these fish. So today we're headed out on the water. I'm not just going to teach you, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now a few weeks ago, Tim did a great video about summertime fishing. He walked you through the different baits he likes to throw and he talked about the importance of shadows. That's something we've talked about a lot in recent months. And that's exactly what we're going to go out and target today. So in the summertime, low light is key. Catching fish early and late in the day is key. You know that. If you wanna catch a fish, get up at first light, go out there. Well, because you already know that, I'm ignoring that part of the day. Obviously, it's not low light. The sun's already beating on me and it is hot out here. Today, we're going to focus on what you do in the middle of the day. If you miss that window, that low light period, what do you do next? We're going power fish and we're not going out here to throw little tiny finesse baits. Let's go see if we can catch a serious bass. Now to kick this off, we're going to start fishing shallow. Today we'll do it with the top water and we'll flip. We're late in the morning, so we may or may not still get on that top water bite. There's a morning top water bite, and then there's a second opportunity midday to throw top water again, and most people miss that. But what I wanna show you is where we're gonna start. See, the sun's up high, there's no shadows out here. But if you look up here along the bank, there's a little tiny shadow right up there against the tulies. Same thing if there were trees, if there was brush, if there was anything, it'll cast a shadow right up in the shallows. And a lot of these fish will suck right up in there tight as that sun starts to come up. Now others will go back out and we'll address that in a little bit, but some of them will come right up tight. You can catch them on a top water. If that starts fading, you can catch them flipping. We're gonna throw a creature bait. You could throw a Senko. There's a few different things you could do. Let's see if we can get a bite. <laughs> Missed him. Darn it. Nice fish, sitting right up against the edge of that, right in the cover. Amazing, it's just, it's clockwork guys. It's not a guessing game. If you understand the pieces of the puzzle, you can catch fish really consistently. Now I caught that one on a Spro popping frog. Normally I like to walk a frog. And I'm still walking this one part of the time. I'm mixing it up, but I wanted the ability to pop because that shadow in front of those tulies is so small. You know, I've only got six inches to 18 inches of shadow before I get out to the sun. So I wanted a bait where I could get the most action in that small space. So I set down my typical frog, went to that Spro popping frog just to stay in there to be able to bloop, bloop, let it sit or to walk it really, really tight and it worked. You can catch fish out here in the summertime. Let's keep moving. In a lot of ways, this midday hot summer day fishing is actually pretty easy. Now you've gotta be out here in the heat, we're sweating. It's not very comfortable, but they're quality fish and they're predictable. 
when you've got low light in the morning, the bass could be virtually anywhere up shallow. But once that sun starts coming up and that shade starts disappearing and they've got to pull into those pockets, you know exactly where they are. It's not a guessing game. There's no question where those fish are. And that makes it a lot easier to present to them with confidence. Now, if you guys remember the video where we talked about where bass go in summer, when we're talking about the shallow half of the fish, they're up in that cover. They're either going to be dirt shallow right up against cover, or if you're on a grass lake, I talked about how they'll be on the outside, on the very, very outer edges, either in the thickest overhead cover or in the farthest clumps out. Do you remember that? Let's head out there now. Again, we're gonna throw the top water, we're going to flip, but we're going to catch the other end of the shallow water fish and then we'll start talking about some of those deeper water fish. All right, we're out here on offshore grass. Now, at first glance, it just looks like open water. But if you really look, there's emergent grass coming up all over the place out here in this open water. And those fish will sit in that, so they'll fit They'll sit right in the thickest spots, and then they'll sit on the farthest edges out. Let's see if we can catch them. Fishing that outside grass. Nice fish. That was actually on a, a rage craw. A one ounce tungsten weight on it. You know, like every video, we'll link you all the gear down in the video description. The exact hook, the bait, the rod. That's that 7-Eleven Extra Heavy x Pride. It is hands down my favorite flipping stick. They're never in stock. They are in stock right now. Uh, but just a fun way to catch them. Most of you guys know, if you've watched a lot of our videos, that I don't flip with a flipping hook, uh, not a round bend hook. I fish with, or I flip with a wide gap hook. Uh, personal preference, I really enjoy it. So this is a really, really heavy duty wide gap hook. But these fish are so predictable, guys. I mean, it's hot out here, I'm cooking. I've already had three bottles of water, uh, but if you're methodical, if you take your time and if you think it through, it's so predictable. These fish are so catchable. You can catch them all the way, one, you can catch them all the way through the heat of summer, but more importantly, you can catch them all the way through the heat of the day and you can have a lot of fun doing it. Let's see if we can get some more. I lost him, darn it. Oh, shoot, we had him. Had that one pegged. He ate it on the fall. I felt the faintest tick on the way down. That's all it was. Now what I'm doing when I'm flipping this grass, I've told you several times that we're on the outside edge, so it's not shallow. Now if it was two feet deep, I would do the exact same thing, but this is about nine feet deep. So I'm using a one ounce weight to get down through the grass. I chose a creature bait that will kick where the claws will move. So I've got good movement on the way down and good movement on the way up. I flip this into the grass and if it hangs up, I shake it until it wants to fall through. 
and then I'm on semi slack or semi tight line all the way down. So if I get bit on the way down or the way up while it's swimming, I will feel it. I don't give it total slack. I keep my thumb on the spool. Once it gets to the bottom, I immediately lift up to make sure there's not a fish there already. There's not. Then I'll shake it. Let it sit. Shake it. Let it sit. Maybe a third time. And then reel it out. And if you've got a good overhead canopy, if the grass comes all the way to the top and lays over, then right when you get to the canopy at the top, stop, shake it one more time, and then pull it out. The benefit of doing that is you've got an opportunity to catch an aggressive fish on the way down because they'll see it come through the mat and they'll just run over and eat it. And if you're feeling that spool, you'll know that you got bit. You'll catch that fish. By letting it go to the bottom and hopping it, if they're lethargic, if they're down on the bottom, if they're not really feeding, you've got an opportunity to still get a feed response out of that fish. And then a lot of fish will chase when that thing is headed back to the surface. They'll see it leave the bottom and they've just got this core reaction, they'll go after it. If you don't stop at the top, you'll never catch those fish. They'll just chase it up, it'll leave the water, that's the end of it. But if you stop on the underside of that mat, just for a moment, if there's a fish flying up there after it, that's when that fish will eat it. So three distinct opportunities for that fish to feed during your one cast. And then just reel it out and flip again. And again, I'm not looking for the thickest grass. That's not what I want. You can go to the thickest grass beds and catch fish, let me be clear. But if you wanna catch the giants, the giants are almost always the outliers. So they'll take the corner of the grass. They'll take that one clump that sits farther out than all the rest. They take those anomalies where they're the only one there to eat. They don't wanna sit in the middle of a giant grass bed and compete with all the other fish. That's not how they operate. They want to own their grass bed and eat everything that comes through it. So keep that in mind. <laughs> well, that's not the one we were looking for, but he's going to grow up to be a big one if he stays out here in the open and keeps eating like that. Man, so the plan was to bring you guys up, do the shallow fishing, then run down the lake, down to some deeper stuff, and look at where these fish go offshore. Focus on fishing that color line, fishing rock, doing some of that stuff. But I've gotta be honest, we spent the first half of the summer chasing smallmouth. I haven't got to do enough flipping and frogging yet, so we're gonna stay right here. I'm gonna catch at least a few more fish because I'm having a blast. Now there is one other way to catch these fish shallow and that's the most obvious way and we're not going to do it today. That's dock fishing. That's the other shadow. See what I'm doing out here in this grass is shadow driven. If the fish are up at the top just below the grass, they'll eat that frog. If they're down at the bottom, they'll eat that creature bait, that punch or flip setup but it's shade driven, just like when we were right up against the bank earlier. So fish will get right up under docks, up under overhead cover, but Tim just did a great dedicated dock video, so we're not even gonna go there. Down in the video description, I'll link that video if you guys haven't seen it, 
But again, shadows, shadows, shadows. That's where these fish are living. Let's try and catch some more. There is something just so rewarding about smashing that hook set on heavy, heavy tackle. Man, that is fun. Awesome, that's the one we were looking for. Oh, and he comes right off. Man, that is fun. We'll end it on that one. Guys, if you're not out here catching summertime bass, you are missing it. You can do this. The fish are here, they still need to eat. Sure, it's hot, really hot. But the fish are predictable if you know what you're looking for. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Down in the video description, I'll leave, like I said before, the baits, the rods, the reels, all the gear, so you can replicate exactly what we're doing. Go out and build your own pattern, chasing those, shadow, those shadows on your own lake. Again, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.